Good day to you, sir, madam. Today I'm going to present the results of my term paper, which I was working on for the past year for European Humanities University. I will proceed with the presentation in the English language because a lot of terminology I used on the basis for my research depends on the specifics of the English language. The object of my research is image repertoire of contemporary audiovisual media in case of fragrance commercials. I have chosen this object on the crossroads of several reasons. I personally believe that one should write about something that fascinates them. And so I chose the concept introduced by Roland Barth, which is image repertoire, because I strongly believe that everyone experiences it, but not everyone acknowledges it. And under the contemporary circumstances of West European model of the world being audiovisual and demand being constantly surrounded by informational codes, I see this time as a perfect opportunity to try the unique attempt of deconstructing the viewing experience, which has been proven to be impossible by the Lombard. I totally realize the complexity and the high possibility of failure, but as the research will show, it was worth a try. And to protect myself from ambiguity, which already floods image repertoire, I set myself a very specific research question, which I took from Ian Burkett. How image repertoire becomes charged with erotic energy? And guided by three main objectives of investigating image repertoire, putting it into advertising discourse and identifying sources of eroticism in it, I proceeded with the research. So that to understand what I am working with, in the first place, I reviewed all accessible resources mentioned in image repertoire, as well as the original works by Roland Part. Unfortunately, I was not able to give a complete definition to the notion yet, but I was able to present it as a collective experience of three participating parties, the viewer, the viewed, and the viewing, as well as identified the distinctive features of it. The latter formed the design of the research. In the end, it became clear that image repertoire implies condition sensory response happened in narcissistic zones of psycho, involves gap, lacks knowledge, is conditioned by its discourse, and has erotic nature. The last feature proves the relevance of the research question. But if we look at the definition of erotic, it seems as if erotic energy can be found anywhere as well as in advertising. That is why I accentuate the word how in my research question. Erotic energy is a fact, but how it gets there has hardly been addressed before. The research sphere I put myself into turned to be very complicated to be delegated. I did theoretical research through the point of psychology, linguistics, semiotics, film studies, themed research, etc., as well as had to collect data from empirical investigations conducted by myself in the following forms. Firstly, an open questionnaire filled by 17 people aged from 18 to 27 coming from 14 European countries in representation of 4 male and 13 female respondents. Secondly, two interviews taken from 11-year-old girl from Belarus replying to the same questions from the questionnaire and a current marketing and advertising department professor of Fontys Academy for Creative Industries in Tilburg, Sven van den Berg. And thirdly, an ongoing online quiz filled by now 270 people aged from 13 to 47 in, min in mixed gender representation. Uh, in the result, I was able to identify the sources of erotic energy. Firstly, is the scent of the fragrance itself. According to Paul Jelinek, one of the main required characteristics of the smell of the fragrance is bodily jet, which stands for erotic provocation. The erotic energy also comes from the viewing process, which has been proven to be sensory. Having reviewed the whole lot of sources, I was able to identify the gap between sensation, perception and action in relation between the viewer and the viewed. The thing is that the viewing happens primarily as a sensational experience, while the aim of the commercial is to result in action. And as the process of perception was not able to answer this gap, I looked further into it by addressing the most commonly emitted gap between feeling and emotion. In fact, those turn to be absolutely different processes, and the difference may be put 
uh, in the way that the former is internal and the latter is external. Even so, perception incorporates both, in a sense that transition from feeling to emotion happens almost instantly. I addressed the gap in advertising discourse and found the linkage in the concept of desire, which is the feeling of active nature. I didn't go far with its investigation, but I attempted portraying the essence of it by addressing two comprising sides, the arousal, which mostly goes with sensation and excitement, which starts in perception and may result in action. I didn't elaborate on it much, but it was crucial for the audio court applied research, uh, which proved that listening to music is the second most arousing thing, leaving behind the pure visuals, which is a very important discovery to question the truth that it's better to see one time than to hear 100 times in the case of image repertoire of contemporary audiovisual media and advertising discourse. Moving on, the third source of erotic energy is the so-called adorable imagery or the audiovisual product itself. Apart from the defining specific of fragrance commercial being a signifier of the absence signified, which is being attempted to be covered by multiple methods as putting the vial into the commercial, inserting a shot of applying the fragrance on body, creating a minimal sign between the scent and the face of the fragrance, and so on and so forth, it turns to follow a defined structure of representation. Having seen more than 300 of ads, I have stopped on 100 and have chosen the method of aberrant decoding for semiotic contact analysis. This choice was conditioned by the defined structure of it and a relative li limit to inevitable interpretation. In the result, I was able to identify the following distinctive traits of a fragrance commercial with the corresponding percentage. Iconic code includes the chronologic subcode represented by the presence of perfume vial, the accent on the body, and applying or smelling the perfume. The aesthetic subcode manifesting in models and celebrities as faces of fragrances. The erotic code represented in such cinematographic methods as slow motion and close up. And the montage subcode in the form of associative and continuous editing. The linguistic code was not covered by uh, content research but was investigated percentage wise, resulting in the usage of French language and narrated by male and female voices. In the sound code analysis, the emotional subcode was omitted due to its ambiguity, but it still remains of interest for future research. Other codes were captured in the usage of popular music tracks with recognizable lyrics and wordless musical compositions. For in-depth content analysis, I went for a shortened selection of four fragrance commercials matching the above stated distinctive features and tried to reconnect them with the four types of desires I was able to identify in advertising discourse, which are sensuous, sensual, sexual, and social. I identified each video as such after the semiotic analysis based on the decessor's principle of signified signifier. The rough summary of the results may be articulated in the way that desire is signified by portraying longing in the form of slow motion and close up. The sensuousness is signified by nature and body represented in blue tones. Sensuality is signified by accentuation of bodily experience combined with associative editing. Sexuality is signified by the portrayal of sexual intercourse and red tone of the picture. And sociality is signified by showing people or events presented in real life storyline. The most important thing I should say at the moment is that semiotic analysis revealed a potential for confusion due to thinness of the line between sensuality and sexuality. To prove or disapprove the obtained results, I asked 17 people to react to the selection, which proved the fact of sensuality-sexuality confusion, as well as confirmed the appropriateness of the theory of desire I came up with. In 100% cases, social desire was recognized as such, and sensuous desire was also pretty easily identified in 94% cases which overall proves the hypothesis of erotic energy coming from the audiovisual commercial.
The next source to be addressed as a source of eroticism was the contemporary discourse. The best proof for the erotic construct was obtained from the interview I was able to take from an 11-year-old girl whose responses to the same selection resulted in disgust and not understanding the erotic energy with which those videos were previously proven to be charged. It especially showed in the cases of sensual and sexual desires, which might be the supposition for sexuality to be a social construct which we inherit through the process of socialization. Another attempt to prove the social construct of sexy dominant was through the search for a fragrance commercial referred to as sexy in multiple online media whose erotic energy, especially as far as the content is concerned, might be questioned. And so I stopped at Very Irresistible by Givenchy, starring Amanda Seyfried. Content-wise, there was hardly any eroticism spotted. Form-wise, on the other hand, it was closed up, slow-motioned and continuously edited. The reactions of respondents proved the slight possibility of eroticism, but rather showed that content remains domineering about the form when it comes to decision-making. And last but not least, erotic energy may be coming from the viewer. Such a hypothesis was introduced by the professor in marketing department at Fontes Academy for Creative Industries, who said that the triggers tend to be individual and hardly predictable. My experience and skills did not allow me to go deeper with the investigation of the viewer because I strongly believe that the best tool for it will be psychoanalysis, which I am yet to learn. But I have started my own investigation on the matter. Currently, I am working on a personal project with the intention to deconstruct the image repertoire, which might result in revelations applicable for future research. The letter is anticipated to be expanded to a different set of audiovisual media, be it film, music video, uh, linguistic and sound cones of the message are planned to be addressed properly, as well as the overall results are to be supplemented by the psychoanalytical investigation of the viewer's party and the experience of image repertoire. Another interesting issue which was revealed in this research is the evident confusion between sensuality and sexuality. Even though linguistic, semiotic and empirical research proved it, I believe there is still space for in-depth investigation of this issue, as well as the data I was able to collect from arousal research, which showed image repertoire-related potential in primary sensory section. For now, it is what it is, and I am quite satisfied with the results. It was a pleasure for me to work on it. I totally acknowledge possible gaps left behind, but those are the exact reason for me to continue. And for further questions, please contact me via the email. And thank you for your time and attention. Bye.